Hi, Jessa Postlu here from the Customer Solutions team at Freight Plus. Today, we are going to talk about shipment preparedness. Why shipment preparedness? It's critical to understand the impacts of what not preparing means to your business and to your, your vendor partners. So let's dig into it from a couple of different pillars. Um, if we start with physical, when you think shipment, you think goods, pallet, how it's built. Um, so the first things I wanna talk about are dimensions. Um, are they good? Are they accurate? That, so often they're not. Um, so whether it's from your order, order management system or a warehouse management system, wherever your data lives for your commodities, it, it's pretty critical that it's accurate. And I know from, from experience, many, it, it's not accurate. Um, it's a huge undertaking to try to correct that, but with capacity the way it is and costs going up, like it, it's, it's costing you money if they're not accurate. So um, dimensions, weights, same bucket weights need to be accurate as well, at least in the ballpark. Um, if you're shipping LTL, for instance, and you say it's gonna be 5,000 pounds, and then it moves, it's picked up, it's delivered, you may get hit with a reway fee because they looked at it and it went under their Cuba scan and they realized, you know what, no, it's not, it's, it's 6,000 pounds. You're gonna have to pay that extra 1,000 pounds. Now, what's dangerous about that is, especially in the LTL market, if you kind of go over whatever your your limitations are for an LTL shipment and that's considered full truckload, then you could get hit with some really big financial penalties and you don't want that. Um, so DIMS weights is where we're at so far. Uh, pallet configuration. How are your pallets built? Uh, depends on what you're shipping. Um, is it loose? Do you have pallets? Do you not have pallets? Do you have the right weights? Do you have the right DIMS? Are you... Are you overstacking your pallets? Are they too high so structural integrity is um, jeopardized? Do you have corner boards? Do you need corner boards? Are, is the product overhanging the pallet? And if it is, can it? Um, with some things you can get away with a smidge. You could get charged back if it's way over. Um, but it could also, again, it comes into that structural integrity piece. If it's if it's overhanging and something heavy, like a glass jar or pickles or whatever, you could jeopardize the freight in that way. So we want to avoid claims, avoid chargebacks, you know, build out that pallet correctly. So wrapping, corner boards, whatever the pallet needs to ship effectively, that should be planned out in advance. So pallet can big. Um, after that, I know this says it's physical, but I, I think it is a physical BOL. How's that BOL getting generated today? Your bill of ladings, uh, does it have all the accurate information on it? We're talking everything from, you know, lift gates, um, time definite, service levels, anything that needs to be on there. Um, depends on what kind of operation that you're working in. But traditionally, if everything's working as it should, and the order is dropped into whatever system you're utilizing to bill your loads, that BOL should be automatically generated and it removes the, the need to key it, first of all, so it saves labor in your warehouse, but also um, the, the challenges of, of, of populating it correctly, right? Having that correct M NMFC, all that good stuff should be built into that BOL and then auto-generated and printed at your facility. No issues there. Let's move on to the non-physical stuff, or that's how I'd like to, to bucket it. So lead time, for instance. Lead time's critical right now. Wicked capacity crunch. Drivers wanna be able to know and plan their route. So the rule of thumb, the industry experts are saying at this time is 3.5 days of lead time prior to pickup. That's why this information is so important. You have to know what's gonna be on your dock before it's built, because we all know that the time and, space, time and space is precious, so you can't have a pallet sitting on a dock for three days. That can't happen. Um, so lead time, if you build your pallet and you ask for same day pickup, you're paying for it. You're paying a lot for it, especially right now, hundreds of dollars, especially for truckload. The other critical thing to understand is contract negotiation. If you're shipping at a regular cadence, it's, it's so important to negotiate with your carriers in advance. Um, 
specifically LTL, because that's all discount based. So if you want to know more about LTL pricing and the discounts, we have another whiteboard on that. So go check that out. We won't get into it here. But um, contract config. So from a truckload standpoint, you got to be moving some pretty heavy volume in your lanes. Um, pretty heavy. In my perspective, I would say at least a load a week right now to look at a dedicated resource. Um, the more you have in that lane, the better, the better your rates are going to be. The reason for it is, is that carriers want to keep moving. So they call it a continuous loop. Um, they want to be able to say, I pick up here every Tuesday and deliver here every Friday so he can get freight. Your driver, he and she, he or she could get freight on Friday to get back here on Tuesday um, and keep making that loop so their schedule becomes more predictable. So contract negotiation, really big for truckload, but specifically for LTL. If your company moves a lot of LTL, understanding the discounts um, that go into your, your, your pricing, um, but also the, the accessorial charges. So if you regularly need a lift gate, pre-negotiating that lift gate charge in advance is gonna save you a lot of money and heartache if you ever get blindsided by lift gate fees. Otherwise, it hits what's called a tariff. So here, I'm just gonna jot down my notes here. So the accessorials, it's really important to pre-negotiate those accessorials with your carriers when you're working through your contract. Um, you only have to do the low hanging fruit. So if, um, detention, layover, storage, accessorials, that sort of thing. Um, whatever it is you use regularly or you get billed for regularly. Uh, then the next thing would be the, the understanding the tariff. So for a tariff, all the carriers have them. It's this huge guide outline of every single accessorial you can, you could imagine with their their pricing matrix for it. So if you don't pre-negotiate those accessorials, you're gonna get hit with whatever's in their tariff and you might be in for some really big surprises. So this will save you money in the long run, heartache um, and a mess of other things. It'll make your carriers happy as well. It's just keeping everything really simple and streamlined. The reason that all this is so important is because ultimately you get to your delivery and your relationship. So whoever it is that you're shipping to, um, whether it's some sort of vendor or manufacturer or whoever, a lot of times they have what's called a scorecarding process. So, oh, <laughs> big secret here. Your carriers are also scorecarding you. That, that's, that's fun. So all this good behavior you're doing here is gonna pay off in the long run on the carrier side and with your vendor partners. So since we're talking about vendors today, um, or for this specific piece, your vendors want to know, is he or she delivering on time? Is it in full? Um, what is that? Are, are there constant damages? What does your product look like when it gets there on a regular basis? So they're scorecarding you. Your carrier is too. Are you always picking up the phone late to have them come? Um, does your scheduling team give them a really hard time? Are they challenging the drivers because all that's being weighed upon. Drivers right now, the market's looking for like 60,000 drivers. So the ones that we had, we're, we're trying the best we can to make them so happy. Um, so if it's really challenging for a driver uh, and a scheduler is giving them a hard time or whoever that individual is, uh, you're paying for it. It's in your scorecard and, and holding up a driver and um, shifting his his or her schedule, whatever it is they have planned, you're also paying for that. So scorecarding, um, chargebacks. Chargebacks are more, in my mind, um, on the vendor side. So whoever your vendor partner is, there could be financial penalties associated with um, whatever it is that you're not doing to their, their guidelines, whatever they have predetermined. So a chargeback could come in the form of um, I came from CVS. We had an on time and full program. So it was called OTIF. So the on time and full meant did it arrive um, on time to the appointment, on time to the day the purchase order was due, and was it in full? How, what percentage of the purchase order did that vendor fulfill when they delivered it? So 
for the chargeback program, understanding all these attributes makes doing all this beneficial for you um, because it's going to really improve your, your chargeback process with your vendor. And if you have questions about how to build out your freight, if you're not configuring your pallets correctly, or they're tipping over too much in transit, or you need something else, you're not blocking and bracing properly if you're shipping intermodal, ask your carrier. They're the pros, like they will help you out. Please, please, please ask your carrier. Uh, if you have a managed partner, sorry, um, like us, ask us, we'll help you out. Um, but the resources are out there, so ask lots of questions. Um, and then the last thing I just wanted to bring up were surprise charges. And this goes back to, we already touched on it, um, not understanding the tariffs in your accessorials up, up front. So if you say, you know what, I shipped it from A to B, it went LTL, it was three pallets, it, it moved as three pallets, exactly what I told the, um, the carrier it was gonna look like, a thousand pounds, I don't know, three pallets, whatever. It delivers, but they needed a lift gate. So the carrier had to source the lift gate to lower the product to the ground, but you didn't indicate that. You're gonna get hit with a lift gate charge. If you don't have it negotiated, they're gonna pull whatever that charge is from the carrier's tariff. So if I have negotiated, say, a $60 lift gate fee, I know that, okay, that surprise is only gonna be 60 bucks, but if I don't have it negotiated, that tariff, it could be, could be a couple hundred. Um, so understanding that in advance is just gonna set you up for success. So to wrap things up, these are the three pillars that I would consider critical to shipment preparedness. So the physical, having all your ducks in a row in advance, uh, the non-physical, contractual, understanding lead time, setting up your carriers for success to the desired outcome. This is what we're, this is what we're shooting for. Good uh, scorecards across the board, carrier and vendor alike. Um, chargebacks reduced as possible, and then reducing your surprise charges. So this is Jessa Pasalu from Freight Plus. Thank you so much for tuning in.